what what can we see through? What can we see through? Well, we we already know that we can see through. As an example, we can see through uh, plexiglass. And if you're wearing uh, if you're wearing eyeglasses, you're actually looking through that same chemistry above plexiglass, polymethyl methacrylate. In fact, the first contact lenses were hard contact lenses were polymethyl methacrylate so we, we could see through that and we had this requirement in the previous video that uh, that would uh, need to be amorphous <clears throat> so there's no crystal boundaries um, in fact that, that led to this idea that there should be uh, for optical transparency no um, well we, we said no interfaces I'm going to introduce a term here um, there should be no scattering events. Let me explore what that means. No scattering events. So that would be things like um, crystal boundaries. Okay, crystal boundaries where the the light may uh, be reflected partially at that boundary, or may follow a different path if. Uh, uh, of course, the light is, is different in a, a new crystal aligned a different way if it's different properties in different directions. Um, maybe what else could you find in, in there? Uh, a pore, right? Like a bubble, that kind of thing, you know? A pore would uh, certainly have a, an interface around it that would change the path of the light. So all these things that change the path of, uh, of light will uh, either make a material translucent or transparent change path of light. But I want to explore a few other things. So, okay, plexiglass is, is a polymer. Can we think of some other material classes that are that are transparent? And in fact, we can also explore this this idea here of well is is the quality of being amorphous, disorganized structure, a requirement for um, optical transparency. And so another example we could look at is, well, what about, um, well, what about quartz? You know, perhaps you know what quartz is. In fact, you, you've maybe seen it in a previous video of mine. I had a little, um, little picture. Let's see if I can just drop this in for you here. So there's a little piece of quartz that I have in my office. And you, you know you can I mean you can see it's uh, maybe translucent on that particular angle but if if you um, if you do look through a, a small piece of this you can see it's actually transparent. There are some little flaws in it, little scattering events inside there that make regions of it translucent. But perhaps you've even seen on a countertop or uh, a stone you've picked up at the beach, you see these little, you know, shiny, sparkly bits in it, and and they are transparent. Um, and quartz is actually it's crystalline, as we've discussed previously. You can kind of tell from the, you know, the the boundaries of this crystal. There's some kind of a regular repeating arrangement to it. Um, specifically, it's it's a, it's a ceramic. It's crystalline uh, silica. It's a SiO2, and so this you know so silica is a ceramic. So well we've we've seen you can certainly have a polymer. You can have a, a ceramic that's transparent. Now we've actually in this example here we've spanned either organized crystalline or not organized amorphous. So we're we're not really sure exactly what the story here is with optical transparency. Um, in fact, uh, let's see, we could we could look at another um, uh, example. Perhaps, uh, well, perhaps even that uh, that salt crystal that we looked at previously. I think this is a, this is an interesting example. So, okay, we're going to look at another ceramic. So this is this is sodium chloride. And if I ask you, well, what color is sodium chloride, or how does it does it appear? Well, if you just pour a pile of salt on the table, a, a pile of salt looks white. But if you look at, I don't know, I double crossed that T just to be extra sure it was a T. Um, it a pile of salt, you know, like this a pile of salt on the table, 
not supposed to be a pile of salt, looks white. And uh, if you look at an individual crystal, on the other hand, it's transparent. Now, there might be some little uh, scratches or cracks or things like that, scattering events, or dirt um, and dust on the, on the surface that makes it look slightly translucent. But if you cleaned it up, you wiped it carefully with a little damp towel or something like that, it, you, you would see that, in fact, the salt itself, the crystal, was transparent. And again, this is ceramic. So we've got... Uh, the, another transparent crystalline ceramic. Uh, I think that this this example here of a pile of salt looking white is a great example of one of the of these scattering events. So when you got a pile of salt, you've got hundreds, thousands of little grains of of salt, and there's all sorts of boundaries with with the air surrounding it, and they're aligned in different directions. It appears opaque, um, but that's not because the crystal itself is opaque. It's because the more macroscopic structure with all these grain boundaries and interfaces appears transparent, uh, appears uh, opaque. <clears throat> um, so, so, so we've got that. What about um, maybe a ceramic that uh, was uh, um, amorphous? And in fact, uh, that's probably one of the first examples that would have come to to mind. Um, if I, you know, if you if you if you think of a transparent material, you probably think of um, window glass, right? I mean, maybe it was the first thing that came to mind and you wondered why on earth is he not talking about window glass? Obviously that's transparent. You interact with it just about every day. Um, so what, what's it made of? Well, it's largely uh, silica. You know, it's got some other additives because it needs to be processed at a you know, lower temperature to make it easier and more costly to, cost uh, effective to do. So there's some additives, um, but it's, it's mostly silica, but it's, it's amorphous. Um, in fact, that term amorphous is actually synonymous with glassy, although the general public sometimes uses glassy a little bit inaccurately. But glassy really means there's no long-range order, and that's why we call window glass glassy. And so window glass is amorphous and transparent. So we, we've seen some examples of crystalline and amorphous things. What about, does it have to be Maybe maybe the issue is it has to be either completely amorphous, as is the case with window glass, or completely crystalline. Well, I could give you another example that you, you know, may or may not be familiar with, uh, but there's some materials called glass ceramics. And uh, there's some examples of these that you might use in your kitchen. Um, some are, are borosilicate glasses. Those are actually not glass ceramics. But there's, so if you have transparent cookware, um, there's different trade names. Visions is, is one, and it's a transparent um, um, cookware, it, and it actually has um, a very fine crystal structure to it. Very, very small little crystals. Um, plus, there's also some amorphous content in it. Amorphous. So, in fact, there are examples where you can have both crystalline and amorphous regions in the same material, and it can still be optically transparent. So this is still transparent. So we don't yet have a very good grasp of what the requirement is for transparency. We have some requirements, certainly no scattering events, but there's got to be more to it. And what I also want to explore is, well, look, we have... We have polymers, we have ceramics. Well, have you ever seen a transparent metal? Have you ever seen a transparent metal? You know, and well, it might sound like a bizarre question, maybe it's something you haven't thought about before. Um, and I think in, in sort of the general public usage of the term transparent, you mean transparent to visible light. The answer is it has to be no. Even, even there's, there's, you cannot have a transparent metal. Um, I hesitate a little bit there because there's another level to this question of transparency, and that is, w what are you talking about it being transparent to? Because you can have, um, I, you know, say if you have a thin piece of a fairly light uh, metal, like an aluminum clipboard or something like that. Um, could be transparent to X-rays. You know, you go, th you put something like that in your uh, in your bag, and you put it through the uh, X-ray machine at the at the airport, and um, it could be you can certainly see through it. 
in the, in the, on the display on the monitor, uh, transparent to X-rays, especially like I said, if it's if it's thin enough. Um, so th there's 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 a, another level to this question of transparency. So we got to specify. Well, what are you talking about? What what is it that it's transparent to? Um, and, and when you just say transparent on your own, you mean what you can see with your eyes. And so what that means is, is it transparent to visible light? And so what we need to explore is what visible light is. So we're going to look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and then we're also going to have to look at a better model for what's going on inside all these materials, whether they're metal, whether they're a ceramic, whether it's a polymer, and how that interacts with radiation in this electromagnetic spectrum. And so we're going to have to really look at, in more detail, the energy levels of electrons in solids. And that's going to be the, the key to understanding transparency, in fact, to understanding um, electrical properties, conductivity, semiconductors, um, color of materials, uh, optical devices. It's, it's going to be beautiful <laughs> what you can get to, but we have to proceed through the electromagnetic spectrum and then some models of the atom first.